Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition, we're going to do some practice problems involving circles. Now remember, as we discussed, there's a formula for circles which are not translated, which means that it has its center at the origin or the point zero, zero. And circles that are translated, which means their center is not at the origin. So the equation for a circle that has its center at the origin is just simply x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. In the case where we have a translated circle where the center of the circle is not at the origin, then we have x minus, uh, the equation for the circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared, where h and k are the center of the circle. All right, so understanding that, let's move on to a problem. The first problem, we want to find the center and the radius of the graph, 3x squared plus 12x plus 3y squared minus 5y is equal to 2. Now we're going to have to go through a process called completing the square in order to solve this and to turn it into an equation which looks something similar to what we had described before as the equation of a circle. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So we want to rewrite this equation by completing the square. And so we can find the center and the radius simply by looking at the equation from this quadratic polynomial. So the first thing we want to do always when you're completing the square is take the constant value and move it to the right-hand side of the equation. You can see that that's already done for us. Next is to group the values of x and the values of y, or the terms with x and the terms with y. So I have 3x squared plus 12x, and then on this side I have 3y squared minus 5y, and they're all equal to 2. Second thing we want to do is we want to, as part of the process of completing the square, we want to make sure that the coefficient for x is going to be 1. So we want to divide, in this case, very simply, we should divide both sides, or both sets of terms for x and the y values, or variables, by 3. So I end up with x squared plus 4x plus y squared minus 5 thirds y is equal to, remember if we divide everything on the left side by 3, we need to divide everything on the right side by 3, is equal to 2 thirds. Now I can go through the process of completing the square. When we complete the square, we have a coefficient of 1. We take the, this is the b value, we divide it in 2, and that becomes, or in half, and that becomes the uh, constant, so to speak, in our perfect square uh, binomial. And then we square that value. And on this side, I have y minus 5, 6, so I take half of that 5 thirds value, and I square it. Okay. Now, x plus 2 squared is not exactly the same as x squared plus 4x, because x plus 2 squared is x squared plus 4x plus 4. So you can see the difference between these two values is going to be plus 4. So I've just introduced four additional units into my equation. And as I do that, I need to account for that addition by adding four units to the right-hand side of my equation. And on this side, I've just added 25 36 to uh, this half of the equation because y minus 5 6 squared is equal to y squared uh, minus 5 thirds y plus 25 36th. Okay, so you can see I've just added 36 units into uh, this equation to make it a perfect square binomial where it wasn't there already. So as I do that, I need to also add it to the right hand side of my equation. So now I have 4 plus 2 thirds plus 25 over 36. So I can easily find the center. It's negative 2 and 5 sixths. That's my center. And then if I add these together, I get 5 and 13, 36. That's the radius squared. If you use your calculator, you'll find out that r is going to end up being close to 2.31. So my radius is 2.31, my center at negative 2, 5, 6. We just use a process called completing the square in order to easily identify the center and also the radius.
The next problem, we're asked to find the area of the circle shown. Given that the circle intersects uh, the origin 0, 0, another point 5, 3, and another point 8, 0. Uh, I also know that the line x is equal to 4 runs right through the center of the circle. As it runs through the center of the circle, I can tell that my value for x is going to be 4. Uh, it must be 4 since uh, the center is on uh, a line that runs through the center of the circle. So 4y is going to be my coordinate, at least my coordinate now, for the center of the circle. And I want to find the area. So in order to find the area, I need to find the radius. I'm going to find the radius uh, by going through a couple problems here. First is, well, I define 4y as my center. I'm going to find the distance between 4y, 0, 0, the origin, and 4y, 5, negative 3. So I am going to say that the distance between 4y to 0, 0 is the same as 4y to 5, 3. So now I find my distance from 4y to 0, 0. It's the square root of 4 minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared. And that equals 5 minus 4 squared plus 3 minus y squared, or y minus 3 squared. So I can square both sides, and I set them equal to each other. And I get, so I take off the radical, and I get 16 plus y squared, so that corresponds to this particular squared value. 16 plus y squared is equal to 5 minus 4 squared, which is 1, plus y minus 3 squared, which is y squared minus 6y plus 9. As I simplify that, I get 6 is equal to negative 6y, or y is equal to negative 1. So now I have my coordinate of 4, negative 1 for the center of the circle. And I can find out the radius of this circle by finding the distance between 4, negative 1, and 0, 0. So 4, negative 1, 0, 0. I've got 4 minus 0 squared plus negative 1, which is my value for y here, minus 0 squared, gives me the square root of the distance is equal to the square root of 17. So I know the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. In this case, the area will be pi times the square root of 17 squared, or the area is 17 pi. In the last problem, I'm asked to find the equation of a path of a point that moves so that its distance from the point 3, 0 is always twice the distance from the point negative 3, 0. So let's see how we write that equation. So I'm going to say the distance from the point 3, 0 here is always is equal to twice the distance from the point negative 3, 0. Okay? So I have the distance from the point uh, 3, 0, or x minus 3, is equal to twice the distance from the point negative 3, 0. So I write out the two equations. The square root of x minus 3 squared plus y minus 0 squared is equal to 2 times the square root of x plus 3 squared plus y minus 0 squared. Again, I'm going to take on the square both sides. I take off the radical. And I get x minus 3 squared plus y squared is equal to, since I squared 2, is equal to 4 times x plus 3 squared plus y squared. If I express this square binomial, I get x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared is equal to 4 times x squared plus 6x plus 9, or 4x squared plus 24x plus 36 plus 4y squared. Simplifying further, negative 27 is equal to 3x squared plus 30x plus 3y squared. Dividing by 3, I have x squared plus 10x plus y squared is equal to negative 9. And then I need to go through the process again of completing the square. So I create a perfect square binomial, x plus 5 squared. And as I do that, I'm introducing 25 new units into the problem. So I add 25 units to negative 9, which gives me 16 is equal to x plus 5 squared plus y squared. So the equation of the path of a point that moves so its distance from the point 3, 0 is always twice the distance from the point negative 3, 0. It's going to be a circle with its center at negative 5, 0 and a radius of 4.